other two on call phones? Yeah, the uh, uh, work phone and then the on call phone. Okay, that one's on vibrate. This one is dead. Wow. It's a lot of phones. Yeah, it's a lot of phones. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the follow up. My name is Jermaine Morris. I am your host today. And today I have with me once again Eric Sanzone. Good to be with you, fellas, ladies, people. It is awesome to be sitting here with a celebrity. Make sure I get my autograph. No, we end no, this right no. Uh, <laughs> but for those that don't know who I am, I am a small group leader in AMP for the middle schoolers, and I attend the Norfolk campus. Woo, woo. And Shout I've out been Norfolk campus. Norfolk campus. And I've been invited uh, to do this awesome job, awesome task with these wonderful people. So I, I'm happy to be here with you and to watch him answer your questions because he's very smart. And so we're going to see what he has to say today. We're going to see. We're going to see. <laughs> All right. So our first uh, question that we have on the docket, Eric. Are there some versions of the Bible that you disagree with? Mm. What is the version or translation mm. that is most similar to the original? That is a great question. That is. That is a great question. Uh, when you think about Bible translations, there are really two, two things or two different ways of, of translating the Bible. So we know that the Bible wasn't written in English. It's good, good to just get that right out front. Uh, most of the New Testament was written in Koine Greek. And so all of the Bibles um, that we read in English are translations. Okay. So that, that's good to know. And it's also good to know that there are um, so many manuscripts uh, of the copies of the copies of the copies that we have more textual manuscripts for the Bible than we do for any other ancient book. So the mm -hmm. translations that we have are very, very reliable. So when it comes to, to translating the Bible, there are basically two things you have to navigate. Um, the first is called the dynamic equivalence. And dynamic equivalence is what did those original Greek words mean? And then the other way we can think about it, and I, don't, I actually don't know what the technical word phrasing is, but it would be a more word for word translation. Okay. So dynamic equivalence is I'm going to read this in Greek and what the author meant was this word for word is I'm going to try to get the words in an exact order. But if you've ever taken a foreign language, you know that you can't just take the words and translate them word for word. You have to help get the meaning. Right. So that's a long answer to say that we live in a time in English, in the English speaking world where there are so many great translations. We use the NIV here, uh, which was updated in 2011. The reason uh, the Bible is updated, because some people get a little weirded out, why, why are we updating the Bible? Well, because we take the original manuscripts and we try to use the best textual evidence as scholars are continuing to study, mm -hmm. and then we try to represent to our culture. So, for instance, uh, in the NIV, in the 1984 translation, there's a Greek word, adelphoi, adelphoi which means uh, brothers, which in the early 80s, right or wrong, if you said brothers, Generally, culturally, people knew you're talking about men and women. Okay. But wow. in our modern day, as they were releasing a new version, they said, you know what? We need to really spell that out. And so they translated that same word, brothers and sisters, because that's the force of the word. It's the plural brothers. It meant the whole community. And so that's just a simple example of where we could see, oh, that's, that's why versions are updated. So we use the NIV. English Standard Version is a great version. There's a uh, online. There's a, a version called the Net Version, N-E-T, and it's just online. And they have all of their footnotes from the translators. It's a great one. Uh, New Living Translation is a little more dynamic equivalent. You get a little more of the feel. But we're NIV, but there are lots of great ones. Okay, that's awesome. So I have seen churches that like would strictly stick to like the King James Version with yeah. all the vows and yeah. these and right like um. How does that work exactly, like, as far as that translation? Because it can be confusing yeah. in our understanding of what English is. Exactly. Uh, so, but I've, I've, heard, I've heard it taught that those are, like, that's the, the one that's closest to the original transcripts. That, that is a, that's a great question. Uh, I, I can't speak specifically for people who um, are King James-only people because I'm not one. I, I will tell you that pretty much universally scholars would agree that the King James is not the closest Bible translation uh, for today because okay. it's working off manuscripts that uh, are not as accurate as the ones we have today. Mm -hmm. Like you said, we don't speak like that anymore. So right. if the point is to understand what the author was saying, because that's what we're always getting when we're reading the Bible, authorial intent. So I think there is a, a beauty to the King James Version. It is poetic. But if you really are trying to study and understand what was the original author saying? How can I read, understand, apply that to my life? 
of the King James is not going to be the most helpful um, for exactly the reasons you said. If we picked up a King James Bible and read it, we might think, oh, that's pretty. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it means. Yes. It's challenging enough to read the Bible. I need the words as you know, simple and modern Absolutely. as they can be. Absolutely. So I have one more follow-up question yeah. with that. So with, with um, the need to update the Bible constantly, yep. is there a risk that people can slide things in there sure. to the point where it's, sure. it's, it's pushing forth another agenda that's, oh, that's great. contrary to what the actual scriptures say? That's, that is, that's, a, that's a really good question. So I think that could, that could happen. Mm -hmm. I think it's unlikely to happen um, for the sheer fact that translating the Bible is such a massive undertaking. Mm -hmm. And it is frankly so expensive. And it is always done in a community of scholars that there is accountability amongst the scholars who are doing the translating to try to be as faithful to the original manuscripts as they can be. Okay. Uh, it is true that every translation, those, those translators have to make decisions and bias comes up from place to place. But on the whole, if you were to take any of the um, translations that I, that I mentioned, mm -hmm. even where there are differences, the message and the meaning is coming out. Okay. And uh, we're, we're fortunate to live in a time. I mean, there, there are, I don't know, I don't have the current figure off the top of my head, but there are thousands of languages in the world that have yet to have any scriptures translated. Wow. Uh, and so we're so fortunate. We have to pick which translation we want. And we have so many good ones. Wow. But there are uh, people all over the world who don't have any access to the scriptures or they have one translation. So wow. we're very blessed. We need to get yeah. on that, don't we? We are, yeah, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. There are smart people working it right now. Yes. Wait, if you're interested in that, Google Wycliffe Bible Translators. Wycliffe Bible Translators, you can uh, find out good things happening all over the world. That's amazing. So we have another question. All right. Are you ready? I'm ready, brother. All right. Give it to me. So th this one is a little lengthy as far as the explanation behind it, but it's very key to the question. Okay. To give some background before I jump into the question, I am originally from Germany and was born into the Lutheran Church. When my family came to the States, my family joined a Baptist church, after which we were then Mormons and then almost became Jehovah's Witnesses. When I was younger, I knew all these churches believed in our Lord, but I was confused by the many different messages they gave and the so-called rules they had to get to heaven. When I was 12, I started reading the Bible to figure out why everyone was teaching differently and who was right. I still never got my answer, and that was why I left the religion a few years back, because I was worried I wasn't listening to the right message. Mm. My question is, we may all be Christians, but who is right? Mm. Why do all different sects of Christianity teach the message of Christ Jesus differently? That is, that's a great question. Wow. That's a big question. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer this uh, hopefully succinctly, and then I'm going to put some links uh, on the YouTube page, uh, articles that you can go and, and read more about. Uh, whenever we think about uh, our faith and when we think about religions, the question we want to come back to is, who is Jesus right. and what did Jesus do? Right. Who is Jesus and what did Jesus do? And so we believe that Jesus, and because Jesus said that he is the Son of God mm -hmm. and that he came to offer his life as a sacrifice for sin. So Jesus is fully God, fully man, mm -hmm. fully God, fully man, and he came to offer his life as a sacrifice for sin. And so where the Mormon church or the Jehovah's Witness church or, or any other religion varies apart from who Jesus is, that is the most important thing we can focus on. And, and um, as you dig, both of those um, religious systems do not believe that Jesus was, is God, is the Son of God, and that his substitutionary death and resurrection is the full payment for for our sins. Okay. So I'll give you some links there. The the other the other thing that and then the question is, well, how do you know we're right and they're not right? Um, the other thing I would encourage you to think about, especially in our our day and age, um, is the like the 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 length of time something's been in existence. So mm. Christ has been around two thousand years old, okay. uh, two thousand years. Uh, the church has been around two thousand years, and there have been shifts theologically over that time. Um, but I got a note here: Jehovah's Witnesses uh, have only been around since eighteen seventy. And Mormons a little longer than that, since 1830. So that's really new in the scope of the history of the church. Okay. And so anytime somebody's saying after you know 1800 years, hey, we got a new take on Jesus, 
We should be slow. We right. should be really right. slow to right. get a fresh take on Jesus because people have been reading and studying <laughs> a long time. So um, I'm going to put some links in the show notes, and hopefully that will that will be helpful. That's awesome. Yeah. So follow-up question for you. All right. Uh, because we know that in, in Christianity there are multiple denominations. Yep, yep. How do you decipher um, which one is... Which one or ones are actually it's good, it's good. Um, actually, close to what the yeah. scripture says. Yeah. we need to be. So here's what there's this um, there's this passage uh, in Acts, and um, you can tell this isn't scripted because I would know where it was if we described it. It's a good question. So, but there's you could um, where I think it's Paul is preaching, and he's preaching to these people, and they're called the Bereans, and the Bereans became famous because they investigated what Paul was teaching. And they, they did their homework and their study. So what I would say to all of us in our, in our church, um, or, or any follower of Jesus, that we want to study the scriptures, we want to learn from other teachers, we want to study for ourselves, and we, we want to seek out what the authors of the scriptures were trying to teach us. Okay. And it's okay that we don't agree on everything. So, so both things are true. We have to live with this tension. So as we, uni we unify around Christ, we unify around um, Jesus and his death and his resurrection and our faith in Jesus. And then we might um, have different perspectives in the church about the, um, about the use of spiritual gifts yeah. or um, what, how the end times are going to roll out or all these things we could disagree on. Right. And the main thing I would say is do your study do your homework and have an informed opinion from the text about why you believe what you believe. I actually mm. just heard somebody say today, in our modern age, uh, we are short on study and strong on opinion. Ooh. And so we want to try to be people who do the work. And then when you disagree with someone, just be kind. Right. You know, just be kind. And that's why denominations form, because a group of people get together and they say, well, we are convinced from the text that this is right. And another group of people say, we're convinced from the text that this is right. And they mm -hmm. say, love you, brother, but we're going to go a different way. <laughs> right. And if we can do that peace, peacefully, mm -hmm. um, it's a good thing to, to continue to search out the text. That's a really, really good question. I love it. Yeah. I love it. So we have uh, one more question to go into. This one is actually an interesting one. Great. All we're right. going to have fun answering this yeah. one. Yeah. If the Jewish people are God's chosen people, are Jewish people who don't believe Jesus is their Savior considered saved? That is a great question. Wow. So anytime a question like this comes up, let's go back to what we, let's, we always want to go to the center. And who is the center? The center is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Who is the center? The center is Jesus. And so we want to say um, again and again and again, what we believe about Jesus and our faith in Jesus is always the most important thing. And nobody will be saved without putting their faith in Jesus. So it does, Paul does seem to indicate in Romans 9 that there may be a time where more, more Jews come back mm -hmm. to faith or come, not come back to, but come to faith in Jesus. Sure. But nobody is going to be saved apart from putting their faith in Jesus. And I just jotted down a couple of verses because I did know this one was coming. Um, in Ro Romans chapter 9, the apostle Paul says this. He says, I have great sorrow and unceasing, unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my people, those of my own race. Mm -hmm. He has unceasing sorrow and anguish. Why? Because he knows wow. that his fellow Jewish people, apart from Christ, are not going to know the, the beauty of eternal life. And then he says in verse 6, It is not as though God's word had failed, for not all who descended from Israel are Israel. And this is the first question. I'll try to do this short, and people have a lot more questions, and that's okay. Maybe we'll put a link there as well. Um, the question was, if Jewish, pe Jewish people are God's chosen people, they were God the Jewish people are God's chosen people, mm -hmm. chosen to be the people who brought the Messiah into the world, who would be the means of salvation for all people. Okay. What were they chosen for? They were cho God's chosen people to bring the Messiah into the world who would offer salvation to all people. And so we support, we want Jewish people to come to faith just like we want all people to come to faith. Mm -hmm. But Paul is very clear that, that it's not being Jewish that gives you a special right. Uh, it is our faith in Christ. That's good. And so we could go on to that for, for hours and hours and hours, but I will leave it there for every, all of us. 
who do we say Jesus is, how we put our faith in Jesus. And, uh, and yeah, well, we just, we just end there. It just end there. We just, we just end, get out while we're not too far behind. Yes. So who do you <laughs> say Jesus is? Ah, that's good. There you go. That's good. Guys, thank you so much for joining us for this episode of the follow-up. We had a really, really good time discussing your questions. Hopefully, you got something from this. If you have any more questions, please feel free to email. Email us at ask at gracebible.church. Boom. Boom. I can remember an email, people. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so until next time, keep digging in, keep studying, and we would love to hear from you. All right? God bless you guys. See ya.